before we get to the actual ascendance we will start discussing the principles of how we are going to go through from the Aries ascendant all the way to the Pisces ascendant. Now got to understand we will use this symbology of the North Indian Vedic style of the system. So this is becomes the first house that second house, this third house, ignore these numbers, this becomes the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth house. In case of Aries, which we are taking here as the example, so Aries in which the first house has got the first sign, first sign is the Aries, is the initiator, second sign is Taurus, third sign is Gemini. Fourth is Cancer, fifth is Leo, sixth is Virgo, seventh is Libra, eighth is Scorpio, ninth is Sag, tenth is Cap, Capricorn, eleventh is Aquarius, and twelfth is Pisces. So we will go in this order for all the twelve ascendants. So let's say if we are taking going to take Pisces ascendant, this number twelve is going to land here. We shall see that. <coughs> and the depiction here, the planets, this is Mars, the red one with an arrow, this one is Venus, the red circle with a cross, that's Mercury, that is Jupiter, that is the moon of course, this is the north node of the moon called Rahu, this is the south node of the moon called Ketu, that is the symbology of Saturn, that is, that pretty much finishes it. So these are the symbols we are going to use. The outer planets we are not going to discuss now. We will discuss in later um, videos. So when I put the planet against a number, stuck to the number, that is the ruler of that particular sign. Okay. So if I take number 5 and there is sun over here, sun is the ruler of Leo. That's the way you got to understand. If I take number 9 and number 9 against that which is Jupiter, looks like a 4, that becomes the ruler of Sagittarius. Number 9 is ruled by Jupiter. That's how you interpret it. Number 12, Pisces is also ruled by Jupiter. Number 2, Taurus is ruled by Venus. Number 8, Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Ketu. This is the Ketu symbol. So this is the depiction style we are going to use. Remember, the numbers here can shift and rotate anti-clockwise as we go from 1 to 12. For example, Taurus Ascendant, this is Aries Ascendant, Taurus Ascendant 2 will go to number 1, right? And 3 will go to number 2. So it kind of keeps rotating everywhere. So this is the symbology basic stuff we are going to use. Another thing you ought to keep in mind, what do I mean by these two over here? <clears throat> this sign is of a planet's exaltation, upward arrow. This is debilitation, downward arrow. So for each of, of the signs except for uh, 5, 3, 9, uh, there is exaltation and 11, there is the exaltation, debilitation for each one. Like you can see for Taurus, the house of Taurus, wherever house of Taurus sits in, Moon and Rahu are exalted, Ketu is debilitated. The opposite sign of that, Scorpio, which is ruled by Mars and Ketu, Ketu is exalted, Moon and Rahu are debilitated. So as you can see, there is a pattern here. The opposite houses have opposite exaltations and debilitations. For example, Aries and Libra. It is ruled by Mars, Sun is exalted, Saturn is debilitated. For Libra, ruled by Venus, Saturn is exalted, Sun is debilitated. For the house of Cancer, Jupiter is exalted, Mars is debilitated. For the house of Capricorn, the Caps, ruled by Saturn, Mars is exalted, Jupiter is debilitated. Same way for Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury, sorry, Virgo, which is ruled by Mercury here, and opposite sign Pisces, which is ruled by Jupiter over there, this is ruled by Mercury, 
Mercury is exalted, Venus is debilitated. For Pisces, Venus is exalted, Mercury is debilitated. Now, what do I mean by in this context, exaltation and debilitation? The Vedic concept uses exaltation and debilitation as energies that become stronger of a planet or weakened, depending upon which kind of sign they occupy. Okay. So, with respect to the ascendant, which is here, which is in your head, which is the first house, which we are talking about in this series, is the head. What energies is in your head, which will carry to the remaining 12 houses? And what happens as a result of that? What kind of life themes play out as a result of that? So keep in mind these kind of rules that we are going to go through and you will see how this play out in every individual life. So opposite houses will have opposite kind of energy. 6, opposite to 12, 2, opposite to is 8, 4, 10, 1, 7, 5, 11, right? And 3 and 9. As you can see, 3 and 9 and 11 and 5. So these four corners, or not corners really, these four signs have no exaltation and debilitation. 3, Gemini, ruled by Mercury, has no exaltation and debilitation. It's neutral. You can call it neutral. Leo has none. none. Sag has none. And even Aquarius has none. So apart from this, every one of the other ones has an exaltation and debilitation planet sitting in them. This we will analyze as we go through every ascendant. So it makes more sense. Okay.